Warning, this is a CNC video. <laughs> but before you click off, I want to just talk about this really quick, about what CNC means to me. And here's an example. This is a bass guitar that I designed a couple months ago. I used a piece of scrap wood and an angle grinder. All those limitations that fuel creativity that I always talk about, they spawn this design, which I, I really like. Um, I'm an artist and I design this work of art. Now I want to produce this work of art for other people. I could do it all by hand or I could let the robots do the grunt work for me while I just do the fun parts to make it beautiful and make it functional and make it a work of art. That only does what I ask it to. I'm the artist. I'm the one that makes it the work of art. That's just another tool on the bench that's doing what I tell it to do. I freely admit that about a year and a half ago I was on the other side of the camp where I was like well there's no place for a CNC machine in my shop or my workflow I want to make things by hand I do this for a reason because I don't want to sit in front of computers I thought that the CNC would suck all of that away from woodworking for me but it does the exact opposite it gives me so much more time and so much more freedom to do the woodworking that I want to do and to do the creative problem solving I want to do and to make the designs that I want to make because the machine can be churning around in the background making the, the, the production stuff happen without me having to physically do it. It saves me so much time to be more creative. I didn't get that at first and I get it now and I get it so much that I wanted to expand my <laughs> CNC capabilities so I got a bigger batter machine in here, the cncrouterparts.com machine and th these are like industrial type machines that you can put into your small workshop like I have. It's a, a two foot by three foot cutting area, this one. And this video shows me unboxing it and setting it up and talking all about it and maybe answering some questions for others out there that are like me, a little new to CNC, a little CNC curious. Uh, check it out, I hope you like it. And feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. If I can't answer them, uh, I will do my best to answer them all. I'll do my best to send you the right direction for where you can find answers. And uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy, be good, stick around. About a year ago, I dove into the world of CNC with my son Vance. We got a little piranha from Rockler. And I was a little skeptical at first about whether there's a place for that type of technology in my workflow, but now I am hooked. But I wanted to do more with CNC in my shop. I have plans. A lot of you may recognize the logo, cncrouterparts.com, from the interwebs and from maker fairs and whatnot. But what a lot of people may not know is that they make machines for normal guys like us too. Besides the giant five foot by 10 foot and four by, by eight foot, like industrial size machines they make for big shops, they make this desktop series that can fit into a normal workshop. And I'm really excited to put this thing together and start trying it out and using it in my shop. Hey. What do you think? You think we can figure out how to put this thing together? Let me look in the hole. <laughs> in the hole. Oh yeah. yeah, I think we can put that together. Vance's part in helping me put this together basically just turned into a lesson on knife safety and how to safely open boxes with my pocket knife. And then he went off and played, but uh, we had a good time opening the boxes up and checking out all the parts. He really enjoyed looking at them up close before they were assembled. I laid them all out in what I hoped would be a logical order for assembly. I downloaded the assembly instructions. I'm going to build it onto this table here where my old CNC used to be. But it looks a little bit bigger than I thought. So the longest side is 48 inches. So I think we're gonna be okay in here. We need to give it a little room to breathe. All the hardware is pretty well labeled in separate bags with part numbers. By far the hardest part of this build, and it wasn't that hard, was the very first step you had to do. They have these very clever little Allen key turn things that pop into the side rails and they're awkward to get the key on and they want to fall out but I figured if you put a little masking tape on them as you can see there that kind of helped keep them in place and I was just able to, to get it all done. Then after that it got way easier. The instructions were pretty well written when I actually took the time to read them and not just wing it and um, it, it all sorts of makes sense as you go along. The, the hardware is all well labeled and uh, it's just a matter of taking your time and making sure you do it all right you know, and, and carefully. But if I were to build this again, I could do it in probably less than half the time now that I know what I've learned from the first build. The instructions read, you do not have to remove the base plate to put the feet on, but I read it as, you do have to remove the base plate. These are really very clever. There's this little spring-loaded marble in here, and it doesn't fit in unless you go sideways, and when it fits in, you can push that marble down, and then just a little bit of a, a little bit of a push there, and now, you have a nice, you know, locking nut back there to adhere things to. 
comes right back out. Pretty cool. I'm only part way through assembling this together and so far it hasn't been hard. It's basically just an Allen key construction. It's a little difficult getting at some of the Allen keys inside these grooves. It's like hard to get the key on there. They probably make a tool that I don't have that would have made that easier than just a standard little. Nathan over at CNC Router Parts recommended getting the ball end Allen keys. He also said the company is starting to sell tool kits that uh, give you everything you need to put one together. Well, what I'm most impressed with so far as I put this together is the, the rigidity of it, like in comparison to other machines that I've seen and used. Uh, it, it's just like, it's like almost overkill the amount of, you know, bolts that you have to put in to put these pieces together. And it just puts, it goes together so sturdy and so well. And like the, the, the Acme thread with the, I can barely move these things by hand. So, I mean, the motors are giant. I can't believe it. Here, I'll show you one. And these, these motors are, are like giant. And this is like, and this is like a factory type of machinery in my little chicken coop barn here. <laughs> I've, never, I've never had the uh, opportunity to work with anything like this new. I mean, I have my old, you know, lathes and stuff that have that sort of old school quality about them, but this is, uh, this is something totally different. After assembling the carriage, next was the wiring. The motors popped on pretty easy. There are these proximity sensors that we put in, and then there's a wiring harness uh, made out of plastic that moves with it that I had to put on. Then it was just a matter of snaking all the wires through. I labeled them. The box that they plug into is very well labeled, so it was very easy to just put it all together and uh, try and make it look as neat as possible, which I'm not good at. <laughs> and then comes the router. I bought the DeWalt 618 spindle because that's supposed to fit into the hardware that came with it. Uh, but this is a really nice router and it has a, a plunge base to it as well as a fixed base. Whereas my my old Porter cable that I have is only a fixed base. I don't have the plunge for it. This does not fit into the plunge base for the DeWalt, but it does fit into the CNC machine. So I'm going to try putting this one in and see if that works out. I can plug my router right into the box and it's a relay so if I had to hit the stop button the router turns off too. I decided to connect this properly to my dust collection system. When I had my smaller CNC machine I used to just hold the shop vac over here. I think the computer part of this is what's the scariest thing to most people that are kind of interested in getting into CNC. They're afraid that it's going to be way over their head. And, that, and I admit it is a little daunting and confusing when you first get into it. But you can do it. Here's basically how it works. You need software to design your picture in, whatever you're going to cut out. You need software to figure out how to cut it out, like what size, you know, router bits you're going to use and whatnot. And then you need software to control the machine. Now, I'm using Vectric software. I'm using Aspire by Vectric, and uh, this is very expensive stuff. You might not want to start there, but they do make some less expensive, uh, smaller versions of this program, which are a great place to start. And there are other options out there as well, but you obviously you get what you pay for. The With this program, I can take art that's been designed in other places, like Illustrator. I can import photos and all this stuff, and I can then manipulate it and turn it into vectors and drawings that I can use on my CNC. I can also create those drawings right in this program. Once I've done that, that's the CAD, you'll hear that word a lot, CAD, computer design aspect of it. Once I've done all that here, I jump over here to my CAM section of the program. This is the computer machining part of it where you actually figure out which router bit you're going to use and how deep you're going to cut and which thing you're going to cut first. Once you've created all of that CAM stuff, you save a code. It takes all that information and it saves it into a bunch of basically plot points on a map. And um, that code is called G-code, and I'm not quite sure why. So now you can take your G-code over to your CNC machine and use that to actually cut your project. This machine uses a program called Mach 3, which I had to download and install, and it costs a few bucks. If you go to the cncrouterparts.com website, there is a page there's a link in my description on this video too that shows you you know where to download this and, and if you read it it gives you step by step instructions of what you need to do there's a couple other things you need to download and and set up in it but once it's set up this is basically the steering wheel of your CNC machine here I'll back this up and you can see besides running the G code I can drive the machine <laughs> with the push of a button. So here's my steering wheel. 
I can program or plug in my G code into this thing, hit send, and then the machine turns on and does all this magic stuff. I ran the machine all the way around its entire perimeter to see how far things would go and I had to make some adjustments to make that all work. This is crude and I'll do something better eventually but for now I just have the string here and I have these cords and air hoses hanging from it so there's some flexibility and movement in them. I have dotted my I's, I have crossed my T's, I have run my first tests on the CNC, I have all the software working. I have a piece of MDF strapped in there now, and I'm going to try and cut out a template for one of my guitar designs. Check this out, I mentioned that relay earlier. You can see here, it turns the router on when you start the program, and then it'll go and cut, and it'll turn the router off when it's done. It's super safe and easy, and I could have the dust collection hooked up to do that too, because it's all connected to that box. So if you hit the emergency stop button, it all shuts down. There's none of that messing around trying to turn them both on at the same time. And it's a great safety and efficiency feature. Well, I'm still going to have some work to do to finish setting this all up just right, and that's going to come with experience and practice of using it, just like everything. I am super happy and excited with it. Now that I've put one of these together and I have a better understanding of how it works, it would be like so much easier to put it together next time. But if you were to order one of these, be prepared to give it a day or two to figure out how to make it, you know, assemble it, get all the software, get everything talking. But now that it's together, it's it just exceeds my expectations. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much, CNC Router Parts. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more projects with this. I have a bunch of CNC projects, most of them guitar-related, that are already um, in the works that you're going to be seeing on this channel. So if you like that sort of stuff, you can like, share, and subscribe. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com, Tim Sway. There's a little slash thing there. And uh, get some more behind the scenes and whatnot there. It's a lot of fun. I will see you all around the interwebs, and uh, thanks again. Be good.